Hello, welcome to another video. Now this is limit at infinity or as X goes to infinity. And let me tell you something. If this sign was a plus, what you'll just tell yourself is as X goes to infinity, this becomes a very large number, a very large number, infinity. The square root of infinity will be infinity. Then you add eight times infinity, which is another infinity. You just add infinity to infinity. Guess what? You get infinity. You don't need to do anything. Your answer will be infinity if this was a plus. The problem is this is a minus. And when you subtract infinity from infinity, the question is, which infinity is bigger? Well, some might argue and say, well, this looks like this. If you take the square root of only 64x squared, you're going to get 8x. So if you then add something to it, this must be bigger than this. So your answer is going to be positive. Positive what? Is the difference 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 1,000 or infinity? You don't know. And because you don't have an exact answer, this is called the indeterminate form. So whenever you see two terms like this, one being subtracted from the other, and both of them on their own will, be, will go toward infinity as x goes to infinity, you don't want to arrive at an answer. You want to create rational terms, or at least make a fraction out of it. If you make a fraction out of it, you're going to have um, something on top and something under. As long as what is under is the only thing that is going to infinity, this entire expression will become zero because infinity is so large that whatever it is dividing, um, no matter how large it is, as long as it's not another infinity, as long as you don't have this, okay? And that thing is not nothing, it's not zero, you will be fine. Okay, so if you don't have this situation, you want to create the situation where infinity is what is happening under and on top is just something that is finite so that the result will be zero. So let's create finite over infinity and see what happens. Let's do it. So the first thing you want to do is create rational expressions. That is, you want to create a fraction or fractions, okay? As many fractions as you can create, create them. And how do you rationalize? Ah, I just said the secret. The secret is you need to rationalize this expression. That is, you must multiply this expression by the conjugate of this expression, which means you write the exact same expression again but you now change the sign to a plus. And when that happens, beautiful. And I'm gonna use this part of the board so you just follow. So we're gonna rationalize this expression. This will imply the limit as x goes to infinity of um, the square root of 64x squared plus x minus 8x okay multiplied by its conjugate the conjugate is still the square root of 64x squared uh, plus x instead of minus 8x it now be plus 8x remember don't change this because this is just a single term so there are two terms in this expression when you multiply by the conjugate it is this sign of the other term that you change okay so when that happens we're going to have this but because we don't want to change the value we have to divide this again by itself so it's just one and this remains the same thing and this is going to be also the square root of 64 x squared plus x plus 8x that's how this one works so at this point we just need to multiply this by this and usually the reason you rationalize is that when you multiply any term by its conjugate the first term will get rid of the square root signs, the middle terms will cancel each other out, and then you can multiply the last term, okay? You have to know that about rationalization. So that leads us to the next line.
this leads us to the limit as x goes to infinity of, if you multiply this by this, you get 64x squared plus x. The square root sign will be gone, okay? And negative 8x times that gives you negative 64x squared. Divided by, now we have a, a denominator now, we've created a fraction because this used to be 1, okay? This used to be over 1, and now it's just um, the square root of 64x squared plus x plus 8x. So as you can see, um, this will cancel this out. What you have left will be just x. So this implies um, the limit as x goes to infinity of x over this expression. That would be x over the square root of 64 x squared plus x plus 8x okay so see we're almost at the end of this because all you have to do right now is focus on the denominator what is the highest power of x in the denominator now let's check that out okay let's use this one it's the same thing if you look at 64 x squared when you take the square root of x squared, it just gives you x, okay? And that's the same thing as what you have here. So the highest denominator, the highest power of x in the denominator is your focus, remember that, is x. So you just need to use x to divide both the top and the bottom. Just get rid of the, as much x as you can. And remember, the, high, the highest x in the denominator is what you wanna look for. And right now, it is just x, it's x to the first. So, because remember, if you take the square root of x squared, it's just gonna be x, and that's the highest power you get. So, let's do this. So we're gonna say this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of, we're gonna divide, so it's gonna be x divided by x. Where did we get this x from? Remember, we're trying to get rid of the highest the power of x in the denominator. And this is gonna be, um, we're gonna divide this I'm gonna write it. Just watch me. There are many ways I've seen people do this, but this is my favorite way, okay? Um, divide this by 64x squared plus x divided by x plus 8x divided also by x, okay? Everything gets divided by x and it makes life easy because this is gonna give us one on top plus this is going to give us eight what will this give us okay now this is what you must see dividing a square root term by x is like dividing that square root term by the square root of x squared okay so it's as if you wrote this the square root of 64x squared over x squared plus x over x squared. I hope you see that because that's exactly what's going on. Because when you push x under the x square root sign, it is squared because by the time you take the square root of it, it will come back out as x. Okay, so that's the only thing and it makes things really, really quick for you. So this is gonna be the limit as x goes to infinity of, we end up with one over, see what happens at this point. x squared takes out x, so you have the square root of 64 plus, what do you have here? One over x. You see that? Plus eight. Ah, this implies as x goes, remember I talked about that fraction? That's it. Because x is now going to infinity and you're dividing one by a super large number. Well, you end up with a zero, okay? So you end up with one over the square root of 64 plus zero. That's what you get, plus eight. Well, what is the square root of 64 plus zero? That's the square root of 64, which is gonna be 8, which is going to be, mm -hmm, now you see the answer. That's going to be 1 over square root.
square root of 64 plus 8, which is equal to 1 over 8 plus 8, which is equal to 1 over 16. Now that's your answer. Now the focus shouldn't be on the answer. The focus should be on the fact that when you have two terms that would be infinity subtracted from each other, you should rationalize it. And that's the process of rationalizing. And this is how you get your answer. If you learned something, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you give it a share. Make sure you give it a good comment. Make sure you subscribe and make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video is out. My name is Newton OKOA. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living.